So here we solve this outside Sudoku by Prasanna Sashadri, which has this extra region uh, constraint, which looks like these four three by three boxes of all digits one through nine. A thing to note, uh, if you haven't ever seen this before, is when you've got a lot of these digits clued, we have uh, effectively like one, two, three, the leftovers have to be what these threes are as clued. And I got two threes to the left and right. So one place to start is there. This is gonna be one, three, nine leftover. And I got a three up above got a nine down below and I'm gonna have a one in the remaining space. This is three, five, seven left over. Got a three here and then five, seven in the remaining cells. Can actually where these intersect just sort of put this straight in the grid. This is two, eight, nine, um, this two on the left, this nine on the right, and then eight somewhere. Again, like you don't have to do this, but it's worth doing this. Another thing then recognizes even having marked this in, I now actually know what the middle three will be. This will be one and six and nine. And for instance, I've got a six in the fourth and six columns. So six is here, uh, nine is down below. So this is one and nine. In this intervening space is three, four, eight. The cell sees three and eight. So this is four, um, eight's already down below. Um, two, five, seven is the last set. Two will be here, five will be here, seven will be here just from the other digits around. So the middle is kind of given when you have all these clues pointing in, particularly the six here and the six here. Coming back to some starting places, just the kind of intersection of these clues, nine and nine is given, one and three to finish this out, the three is up above. So this is three, this is one that interacts with this one, three, nine. So this is the last three. This now has to be a nine, has to be a one. We get a three at the intersecting point, five in these cells, six in these cells. One is somewhere in the space, not yet more we know about it. Back to here, this two, eight, nine needs a two, eight to in the remaining cells, but two's to the left, so this comes over. Two, eight, nine in these cells gets filled in quickly. We get an eight up top uh, somewhere. It's not in this first column because there's a one clue up above, but the other cells are all valid for it. These two nines means the nine is in the box, but this nine is also clued here, so this nine has to be there. Notice with one, two, three here, we only have one, two there, and actually this one forces one and two. So nine is in this cell, which means there's a nine in these cells. Can't actually be in those cells because of the five, seven pair. Um, this one puts in this one, which actually forces two, four in these spaces, but there's a two up above. So this is two, this is four, four coming across. Um, that four comes over here. So this is a four, puts in this four, six, seven left over, but seven is a give me at the start of the grid. So I get four and six and seven all placed. This four, six gives me this five and this three. Does this five help me? It gives me this five, which gives me this five. I've got six, seven to go in these cells. Um, the six up above actually gave me this six earlier. I just hadn't marked it. It gives me this six, this seven. It gives me a seven in one of these two cells, but there's a seven to the left. That means there's a seven here with an eight, nine, eight, nine. Um, five and five give me a five in the middle of these three rows, four and six to go, but there's a six on the left in this first row. So four above, six below, six now in the middle. That four is gonna have to work around this one, two clue and effectively be in one of these spaces. Um, the six is gonna have to be up top. So we've got good notations there, but not yet the next step. So maybe it's just coming back here, two, four, eight with two and eight below puts a four in here, puts in this as a two, eight, two, eight. One and one coming up this column gives me a one, one, two quite quickly, one, two, gives me this two, gives me two and eight and eight, which gives eight and nine and nine and four. Um, that now limits just six and eight for these cells. So eight is only allowed there, six is only allowed there, pushes down nine, pushes over four, pushes over four. We've got six and eight, but eight's up above, gives us this eight. Uh, we still need to get a three in this bottom box, got a three in the third column in the seventh row. So this is three, this is three, five, seven to go. Um, this is one and five, and that five puts in this five, which gives a quick five, seven, five, seven, seven, and last digit six, and we're through the grid. So really easy outside Sudoku. There are harder outside Sudoku if you go to our masterpiece, Sudoku Mix we recently released, but this is a good example, at least of how the clues, once they come in mass, give you the leftover digits to work with, both sort of outside the grid, even in the center box. So if it looked like I was solving this unusually, it's in part because I've done so many outside Sudoku, I don't even bother with like these give me's, although you probably should if you actually want to do it as fast as possible. Also just look at the actual intersection of these clues right at the start. So 
hopefully this gave you a sense of some of the, the meta thinking with outside Sudoku. And as I say, uh, please look to some of our books if you're curious to see more outside puzzles in general. Thanks for your time and we'll see you again soon.